Frederick liked to watch. It's the kind of sentence that can make your skin crawl. But it was true. He did. He liked it. And so in a world where watching is not always welcome. Frederick decided to take a job in a field most suitable for him. Security. Frederick bounced around from job to job, so to speak, but always did well in his field. He would sit in his little room with all of his big bright monitors and watch the world go by. Stores and malls were his favorites because there were always lots of people to watch. I suppose it is important to remember that Frederick didn't like to do. He just liked to watch. He just liked to see how the world would play out, disconnected and distant from anything related to people. It was a strange relationship that he had with them. He always wanted to know what other people were doing, but he didn't want to have anything to actually do with people. People were noisy, and they were filthy, and they were always getting into his business. And so... He somehow found fascination with a screen between them and he. He could watch them. He could know every little thing they were doing. They couldn't see him. Typical of a coward like Frederick. But he was good at his job and businesses did appreciate that he could find every little time someone would be a little bit too sticky-fingered, or when a employee decided that they needed a little bit more than just a cigarette. Frederick always found them, and always caught them. And Frederick was blissful in his little job, just a little cog in an enormous machine. And then, one evening, Frederick was doing what he always did, wasting away his day and long into his evening, staring into screen after screen, as the store played out its usual play, people buying 
and leaving and coming and returning and being the vile little putrid germ bags that they are. That's what Frederick thought of them. Just disgusting little creatures, all eking out their existence while he, perched up in his little safe room, would watch them all pass him by. Much, much like a child watching creatures in a zoo. Fascinated and safe. Frederick's shift was running a little bit into the evening. The store was closed. People were filtering out. And as part of his job, he had to remain until he would be the last to leave just to make certain that no one else was hiding in the store. It was really the best time for him because everything was winding down and he could enjoy looking at other people through other screens and nobody would be the wiser. As he flicked up and down and giggled and sneered and offered advice to people who never asked for it through his little phone, he suddenly noticed a change, a figure standing out where it shouldn't be. That's strange, Frederick thought. Did someone move a mannequin? He squinted and stared intently. He couldn't understand. He knew that no one was in the store, at least that he was certain of it prior. So who would move an object into his line of sight? Someone had to be there. Someone had to have moved it. Frederick. He sighed. You're just going to have to go out there. You see, Frederick hated this part of the job. The coward that he was, he didn't want to actually face anything. He just wanted to see. He just wanted to watch. And so he went down there, got onto the sales floor and to the aisle where the figure was in question. But Nothing was there. Nothing was there at all. Frederick took a moment to go through the adjacent aisles and even through this particular department of the store and couldn't find anything. Oddly enough, there wasn't even a mannequin in this section. So he did one more walk around the store just to be sure, just to listen for any cricking or movement or breathing. And Frederick was confused. Perhaps he was just seeing things. Perhaps he made it all up in his head, desperate to have one more person to watch that evening. And so he went back to his security room. And then he saw something that didn't make sense. 
Something seemed out of place in the monitor that had the figure in it. He could see something had moved. Something had changed. Frederick decided to rewind the tape, as it were. In this digital age, it's unnecessary to use that particular phrase, but I think you understand. And as he played back the moments where the figurine should have been, he couldn't find the figure anymore. Instead, he decided to do something he'd never done before. He continued to play the tape as it happened, watching this blank screen, and Frederick thought, well, that's very strange. What did I go down to see? Frederick saw his self, his past self, walk into the aisle and stop right where the figure was. And that didn't match up with what Frederick had done. He waited to see if Fred, the old Frederick, did any of the things that he described before, but he did not. He didn't move. He didn't change position. He didn't walk around the store. He didn't look. He didn't look for the other mannequin. He didn't look for anything. He just stood there. Frederick was confused. He was upset. Something must be wrong with the camera. It must be broken. And then Frederick saw himself turn around and face the camera. And Frederick blood ran cold in his body. The face he saw was his own, but stretched and contorted. He saw a wide and happy grin across his own face, so ghastly. And he decided to flip on the switch for the audio. And in a chittering, happy, but equally disturbing voice, he said, Hey, Frederick, watch this. The figure reached up and grabbed his own face and twisted it. And with a horrific guttural snapping sound, the figure fell to the floor. Frederick didn't understand. Frederick rushed to grab the phone, to call an authority, call 911, call someone, anyone. But Frederick could not. Frederick's hand went through the phone. Frederick never left the sales floor. Be careful what you watch. 
it might just kill you.